Hi there everyone, once again we're at the British Horological Institute, I'm with clock expert <laughs> Alan Middleton. Now there are all sorts of clocks here, unsurprisingly, and we're going to show you today a very special kind, but before we do that, we need to recap how like a normal long case yeah. clock would work. I know that's a pendulum. This is a weight. Yes, that's the driving weight. The weight wraps itself around the pulley on the inside of the clock mechanism. The power is transferred through a train of wheels to the escapement, which is the pendulum that unlocks that escapement, releases the wheel work, locks it again. And all this is done in one second intervals. And so this pendulum, which is 39.14 inches long, beats at one second intervals. The way the clock can tell time, yeah. can know how long a second is, is by the pendulum's interval. It knows that this should be a second. I know when to turn my hands because of the pendulum. Because of course, you don't have to use a pendulum to keep time. You can come up with other ways to doing it. Rather than the interval of a pendulum, you could use, for example, metal balls. Let's go and have a look yes. at two very special clocks in the other room here. Nice. Okay, Alan, you've brought me to this other clock. Now, I'm immediately noticing there is mm. no pendulum. So how does this one work? Okay, this is quite different. It was invented by Michael William Congreve, and it runs simply on the basis of a metal plate with grooves down it, and there's a little ball at the end. And the ball acts, if you like, as a pendulum. The ball will start to roll, and to roll it down, each one of those grooves is approximating one second. So it's literally moving at one second intervals, of one second there, one second back there. And this will go down the plate, which takes 30 seconds all the way down to the bottom of the plate. So when it got to the other end, it, like, it tipped this little the, yeah, lever, the little, which yeah. released something. It did, released the wheel work on the inside. It tips the plate. So it's a bit like a pendulum swinging at 30 second intervals. And there's a large barrel here behind here. That is the spring there attached to what's known as a fusey over here by a chain. And that's what drives the wheel work through there. So relax everybody, Congreve didn't invent like a perpetual motion machine. No. We need the spring to do this little yeah. stunt you're about to see again now. I think that's the most frequently asked thing I have about this. People say it's a perpetual motion, isn't it? People have this idea that somehow this works forever. We well, no. can't do, eventually the spring will break down. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the energy is coming from, from the key, which is used to wind up the spring. Yeah. You're not um, a big fan of the timekeeping. Uh, timekeeping is atrocious, it really is. It's, um, I mean, you do not run your life by, by this sort of clock. If it kept time to within you know, half an hour a day, an hour a day, I think you, that should be fairly reasonable. The ball this is, it travels along there, picks up dirt all along the way. Uh, there's all sorts of things that seem to go wrong with it. So um, they're fascinating to watch, but truly terrible time This is what I like. Along this little bridge here in the middle that the ball goes through, there are little markers, so you could count individual seconds. You could, yes. There is another one of these over the other side of the room. It's very similar, but we may as well have a look for the sake yeah. of completeness. Okay, so Alan, this one, this one looks very similar. The ball's a little bit bigger, it's, it hasn't got the bridge, but it looks like we're looking at the exact same system. It's, it's the same, exactly the same system. The same design, but it was built by one of our members, and it's a skeletonized plate, it's not a solid plate. You can put hands it, you can see through the plates, that makes it lighter. But otherwise, it's, it's virtually identical. This was made sort of in the last 20, 30 years? Yeah, 30 years or so, yes. Okay. Yeah. I've heard this is a bit of a favourite with people when they come and visit the Institute. It is, yes. Clock and watchmakers used to like them as well, to have them in their shop window, because it always attracted crowds. It lures the customers it in. Does, yes. Yeah. And this is the key for it. This is, this is how you wind the spring. That's right. Yet again, we have a spring in here, and it is the spring that is allowing the plate to continually be tipped back and forward once the ball has done its 30 That's second correct, business. Yes. Normally, this is actually covered, but we've been warned, I think, at least 10 times <laughs> by Alan that these things here are super, super sharp. It almost sounds like you're speaking from experience. Uh, a, a bitter experience, yes, when I. I I wound the clock and drew my uh, uh, arm away rather too rapidly and uh, well there's a good deal of uh, blasphemy that took place yeah. uh, at that time so yeah. <laughs> so if you ever find yourself here at the institute and you should come to the institute you can visit here and see these things be very very careful of these pointy bits here support for this episode came from 23andme the genetics service that will help you learn what the 23 chromosomes that make up your dna can teach you about your ancestry, traits, and health. To help with scientific research and discoveries and learn your own personal DNA story, go to 23andMe.com objectivity.